So we're at the beginning of Daf Yud Ches Amid Aleph, where the Rigmar is discussing with the Gzardin that there is, if a person's davening could help to remove a Gzardin, when there's a decree already upon a person. And the Gemara made a distinction between a Gzardin of a Yachid and a Gzardin of a Tzibur. That when there's a Gzardin on a Tzibur and the Tzibur is davening, then for sure you could remove the Gzardin. But when it comes to a Yachid, so then a Yachid cannot, an individual cannot. But now the Gemara brings that there's actually a Machlaik is about this. And according to one or maybe even two opinions here, you could remove even the Gzardin of a Yachid. When there is a decree, even on an individual, Tanoi. There is an argument here amongst Tanoim if this is something that a person could remove. There are two people that are going to bed. In other words, they're not well. Or another, and he adds, and they're both sick with the same sickness. And two people that are being judged and they're being taken, they're, they're both uh, in a judgment for capital punishment, for execution. Liden, they're being judged. Vidin and Shava, and they're being judged for the same, they were caught for the same thing. So you can't come and say that this is for one thing. No, they're both being judged for the same thing. But what happens? Ze yarad vizela yarad. This person gets out of bed and gets well, and the other person doesn't. He doesn't survive. Zen nitzel, vizela nitzel. And when they're both being judged for execution, one is saved and one is not. Why did this guy come out of bed and this guy did not? And Zen nitzel, vizel loy nitzel. And this one is saved and the other one is not. The answer is, ze spalo venene, vize spalo veloy nene. One davened and got answered, and the other one davened and the Evisha didn't answer him. What's the reason for that? Why is one answered and one is not? One daven that fill a shleima, he daven to fill it properly with kavana. Now Rashi says, Niskaven. And Vize loyus palosh to fill a shleima. And the other one did not daven a proper to fill with kavana, so therefore loy nana, so he was not answered. So this is the Tanakamiho, which is Rabmeir. So what does Rabmeir say? So you see right over here, in the opinion of Rabmeir, that even a yachid, if he davens properly with kavana, so then he could be saved. Rabbi Omar, Rabbi says, Kan Kaidim Gzardin and Kan La'ach Gzardin. The difference between these two individuals is, by one there was already a decree, and therefore he can't remove it, and by the other one, it was before the decree, so therefore he was able to remove it, and therefore he was saved. Rabbi Yitzchak Omar, Rabbi Yitzchak says, Yafe Tzayke Adam. It's good, it's beneficial for a person to scream and daven to the Ebishter, Ben Kaidim Gzardin, Ben La'ach Gzardin. Whether it's before the Gzardin, whether it's after the Gzardin, to daven to the Ebishter always helps. So over here as well we see in Rabbi Yitzchak's opinion, Yofet Saikel Adam. There's a Machlaikis in the Rishayim exactly, who is the one that holds that uh, you can daven even after a Gzardin. It seems like it's Rabbi Yitzchak, right? Rabbi Yitzchak is the one that says, Yofet Saikel Adam. Others say, no, it's Rabbi Meir, it's the first opinion that says, Tfil Shleima. In the Lashon of Rabbi Yitzchak, you don't see it so clearly because Rabbi Yitzchak is just saying Yofet Saike. Yofet Saike doesn't mean that it's uh, for sure going to help you. Uh, but on the other hand, others say no. Dafka Rabbi Yitzchak is the one that's pointing out that Saike works even after Gzardin. In the Lashon of Rabbi Meir, when he talks about Tfil Shleima, he doesn't say clearly that that's even after Gzardin. Either way, you do see that there is an opinion that even for a Yachid, to Davin after Gzardin works. But now the Gemara comes back to a Gzardin that's on a Tzibur. So by, by, for the Gzardin that there is on a Tzibur, for, before we said for sure that if it's Tzibur is davening, they can uh, tear that Gzardin. But the Gemara asks on that, Gzardin, the Tzibur, a Gzardin that there is on the Tzibur, mi mikra, is this something that they can uh, tear up? There's one Pasuk that says, Kipsi meira libech, wash out the, the evil that there is in your heart. So that in one Pasuk it says that they can wash it out. This is Psukim in uh, Yirmiye, where it's speaking about before the Chorma, the first place on Mikdash. Oksiv in another Pasuk it says, Kim Tachapsi Ban Neser, even if you're going you to wash yourself with Neser, which is like a cleaning agent. Vitar Bilach Buris, and you're going to use a lot of soap to wash yourself. Nechta Mavainich, Lefonai. The, nevertheless, the stain of Yahweh is still in front of me. In other words, the Pasuk is saying that you cannot cleanse yourself, it's not going to help. So what does it mean? In one place it says you could wash yourself, in another place it says you can't. So my love, don't you think the difference is kan kaidim gzardin and kan lach gzardin? The only way to answer the contradiction here is before the gzardin of the chorben, so then the yidin could wash themselves and do tshuva. But after the gzardin, it's too late; they can't do tshuva. 
So the Gemara says, no, that's not the pshat. Loi. In both cases, it's after there was already the decree. And Velikashia, the contradiction of the Tupsukim is not a question. When you have Exardin, there are different levels of Exardin. There's Exardin that comes along with an oath. The Ebishter makes a decree along with an oath. That's something that you cannot remove. Then there's a gzardin, where there's no oath along with it. That's a kind of gzardin that a person could, uh, could, could remove. Or the tzibur, we're talking here about the tzibur of Yidin, they could wash themselves and do tshuva and the chorban would not happen. From where do I know that when there's a decree and it comes along with an oath, that that you can't tear, Shanamak, as the Pasik says, Ulchain is Bati Lu Baisali, the Abishtim take makes an oath for the house of Eli, in Miskaper of M Baisali, Bizavahu Bimcha, if the Kapara will come to the house of Eli through bringing any carbonus. In other words, it will not come. The Abishtim over there it was not only a Xardin, this was the children of Eli that behaved mis- inappropriately in the Baisa Mikdash, and there was a Xardin on them, and it's not only a Xardin, but it is also a Shvua. And in such a case, through davening, you can't tear such a gzardin, even though the house of Eli is all of his family, all of his descendants, which are at Sibor. But nevertheless, you can't tear a gzardin with a shvuah. But now the Gemara says, even this, even with a shvuah, there is a way how to get rid of this gzardin. Amar Rave, or other, others are going to say, Amar Rave, B'zevach u'b'minchein emeskaper. With Karbonis, you can't bring an atonement to a gzardin that's with a shvuah. Avol meskaper b'teireh. But through learning Teire, you could be mechaper the gzardin. Abai Yama, Abai says, Bezevach o mincha ain't a meskaper. With karbonis, you can't bring a, a, a kapara. Avo meskaper be Teire o be gemilas chasadim. But with Teire and with gemilas chasadim, you could be mechaper even a gzardin that's along with a shvua. Some say you read the Gemara, Betayda u b'gemilas chasadim, that Abai is saying that you have to have both, Taira and gemilas chasadim. Some say that Abai is saying either Taira or gemilas chasadim will bring a kapara for uh, even a gzardin that's together with a shvua. So now the Gemara brings... Uh, huh? Yes, he's adding. He's adding another option. Not only Taira, even gemilas chasadim. The Gemara brings how this was actually applied. Rabbe va Abaye, or... Um, Others are greatest that it uh, Rabbe, but in Argumar it says Rabbe, Taisa says it has to be Rabbe. Mid the base Eli Castle, they came from the house of Eli, which basically means that they were Kayanim, right? They were descendants from the Eli and the family of Kayanim. So what happened with them? Rabbe, the Osak Betaira, Rabbe that learned Taira, Chaya Arbon Shnin. He lived for 40 years because there was a Xayda on base Eli that they're not going to live. They're not going to survive. So that, what that means is, as the Mepharshim explained, the Xayda is that until 20 years they could live, and then one, from 20 years old they can't live anymore. Because all the Xardin, Minashamayim, it, it takes effect on a person when he's 20 years old. But Rabbe, he learned Teireh, so he was Zeichet an extra 20 years, and he lived four to 40 years old. Abaye Dasek Beteireh Ubi Gemilus Chasadim. Abaye learned Teireh, and he also did Gemilus Chasadim. Chaya Shitnishnin. He lived for not only an extra 20 years, he lived an extra 40 years. He lived to 60 years old. Taisus here adds to the Gemara in the end of the Taisus Rabbah that the truth is that even Rab also did Gemilus Chasadim. And Taisus brings a clear Gemara about this in Sanhedrin. But nevertheless, Abaye did even more Gemilus Chasadim. So he did extra Gemilus Chasadim. So therefore he lived to 60 years old. Ton Rabbanon and Abraisi, we learned similar about the, about the family that comes from Eli Akain. There was a family in Yerushalayim, they would pass away, not at 20, but they have passed away actually a little earlier. They passed away at 18 years old. So, they came and told Rabbi Yechen and Zakai about this. So he said to them, Maybe you are descendants of the family of Eli. And it says by them, All the people that come from your house, your Musu Anoshim. They're going to pass away when they become Anoshim. And the, he's teaching over here that Anoshim refers to when they're 18 years old. So the Mepharshim said, when you ches so when you become 18, that's when they pass away. So he t- gave them advice, l'chu v'esku go and occupy your time with learning Teire, and v'chayu, and you'll live, halchu v'esku b'teire, they went and they were occupying the time of learning Teire, v'chayu, and they lived past 18 years old. V'chayu k'ayre n'ayisa m'shpachas, Rab Yechenen, they called this family the family of Rab Yechenen, al Shmai, on the name of Rab Yechenen, because he gave them life, he gave them the Eitzah to live. Did he learn Teire before that? 
m- maybe not, or maybe they didn't learn enough Taita. Like it said before regarding Mil's Chasadim, it depends how much Taita you learn. How do I know that when it comes to a Gzar Din on a Tzibur, that it's never sealed. The Gzar Din on a Tzibur is something that the Ebesha always leaves open for the Tzibur to do Tshuva. You're telling me that it's not sealed. But before the Chorban there by Yirmi it says, as we quoted before, that the stain of the Aveir is in front of me. And the Ebesha says, you can't wash it off. It said that it's exar din and there's a Shvu and it's too late. So what does he mean it's not sealed? Ella, so the Gemara explains what he means. Even though it is sealed, but nevertheless Nikra. You could always tear it up. Shanamar, because the Postic says, that the Eibishter is our God, that we could always call out to Him. So it says, You could always call out to the Eibishter. So this is going back, even on that Gzardin, the Gemara before said that it's together with Hashvua. And nevertheless, now the Gemara is saying, the Pasuk is saying that it's a stain, but it doesn't mean you can't tear it. If you daven, you could get rid of this uh, Gzardin of air. There's another Pasuk that says, you can seek out and, and, and call the Eibishter when he's found, which means not always. And for the Gemara, Hossam biyachid. That's speaking about an individual. By an individual, he could, he could call out and be sure that the Ebesha will answer him only when he's found. But Hacha b'tzibur. Here it's speaking about a tzibur. A tzibur could always daven and the Ebesha will always listen. So the Gemara says, biyachid, So when is that time of bihimotzai for the individual? These are the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. That's the time when a Yochid could call out to the Ebishter. So this, we had this already, this point uh, yesterday regarding the difference between Yochid and Sibur. And here as well, the Gemara is saying that the Kayach of a Yochid is like a Sibur. That's the time when the Ebishter is Bihimotza. It's a deeper connection that he has to the Ebishter. There's the famous diak on the Lashon of the Gemara. Mepharshim pointed out, how could you say Asara Yomim should be in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur? There's only seven days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The Rebbe spoke about it many times. And the Rebbe explained that when it comes to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, there are two aspects. On one hand, they are part of the Asara Simei Tshuva. They're just like the Asara Simei Tshuva, 10 days. But Rosh Hashanah also has an added thing, the mitzvah of Shoifer and the particular thing of Rosh Hashanah. And Yom Kippur also is part of the Aseret Simei Tshuva, but it also has the special union of Yom Kippur, the Yitzu Meshu Yom and the fact that you fast on that day. So therefore, it's using the term Asara, including Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, but it still says, Bein Rosh Hashanah the Yom Kippurim, since they do have their own level, that they're higher than the Aseret Simei Tshuva. Vayihi Kaseret Hayomim, there's a Pasuk that it says, and the Gemara here is bringing this Pasuk, as we'll see, also connected to the Asara Yom Shemir Rosh Hashanah the Yom Kippurim. So there were 10 days, and the Ebishter hit and killed Novel. So this Novel was an individual that was very rich, and David HaMelech sent to him servants that he should, uh, they should bring him things from Novel, and Novel did not give them anything. He dis- disrespected David HaMelech. He says, who's David HaMelech? Why should I give him anything? But the Ebishter waited 10 days to kill him. So, Asara Yomim, Maya Vedetai, what's these 10 days? Omer of Yudah Marav, Keneged Eser Legimois, Shenosa Novel, Laavde David. Even though I didn't give them what they asked for David Amelech, but nevertheless, he served them. He, each, each one of the servants that came to him, he gave, he gave them uh, to eat something. So, for that, because he served the 10 servants, so therefore, they wish to wait 10 days. Here you see again the Maya of Gemilas Chasadim, even if he did it begrudgingly. It was the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur where there even a Yachid has the chance to do Tshuva even if there was a Gzar Din already and therefore they to waited for him 10 days. Okay, this is the conclusion of this whole sugya about Gzar Dinim. If you see how this sugya w- went over here the Gemara like, starts off saying that there's different limitations of when a person can get rid of a Gzar Din but then as the Gemara keeps on going, the Gemara keeps on saying, ah, the Amos says that even this you can get rid of, and the Amos says even this. And then, right, in the beginning the Gemara made a distinction between a Yochid and a Tzibor. And then eventually the Gemara says, no, even a Yochid is an opinion also. Then the Gemara made a distinction between whether it's with a Shavuah or without a Shavuah. Then eventually the Gemara says, no, even with a Shavuah you could also get rid of the Gzar Din. So the Maskan of the Sukhi is, whether through Teira or Tfila or Tzedakah, through one of them, you could, or maybe all three of them is the best, you can get rid of any Gzar Din, including a Gzar Din with a Shavuah. Yeah, you're saying that not only the Tzibor, the 10 days, even Anytime, anytime, yeah. Okay, Malach Basada for sure, so yeah. 
Going back to the Lashon of the Mishnah. But Rosh Hashanah, Kalboi, Ha'olam, Oivrim, Lufanov, Kivnei, Marim. Rosh Hashanah, when the Eivishter judges all the people, so everyone passes through in front of the Eivishter, Kivnei, Marim. What is this expression? So the Gemara here brings three Pshatim. My Kivnei, Marim, what does this mean? So Hacha Targimu, here in Bavel, they translated uh, Bnei Marin as Kivnei Imrano, like the sheep that come out of the door of a barn, when they come out in a single file line. So the word Imrano is the word for sheep in Aramaic. So Marin comes from this Aramaic word. Eshlakesh Amar Eshlakesh says, Kemailois Beis Marin. It's like these uh, going up in this steep hill in a Bnei Marin, it's a place in Eretz Yisrael. Some say actually that this is read as Marin, it could be read as Miran. In that area of Miran, you go up in this steep place and there's a cliff on both sides and you have to go up in a single file line. Rav Yudah Mashmuel says, a third pshat, Kechayolois Shal Beis David. Like the soldiers that come out from Beis David and they come, they march out also on a single file line. So Rashi explains according to this pshat, so the word Marain refers to the master, Marus, master. That they come out from the master, they, they follow the, the soldiers that are marching out from their master into war. Those are the three expressions, but they all mean the same thing. That they all come and, and in front of the Ebishter in a single file line. Chayol Beis David. Today is Chav Cheshven. Yeah. But nevertheless, even though they're all passing through one at a time in a single file line, but never, the Eibishter sees them all in one skira, with one look, and the Eibishter judges everybody all at, at once. Okay? So on one hand, each one, in other words, what the Gemara is really saying is, as the Mepharshim explained, on one hand, the Eibishter looks at every individual as an individual, but on the other hand, the Eibishter looks at everybody together as a tzibur, skira achas, that it's all one thing. So the Gemara brings a raya for this. Amar of Nachman by Yitzchak, Afana namitanina. This point that Rabbi Yechenin said, that the Eibishter judges all of them together, we could see it from the Mishnah. Because the Mishnah Taka says, Kibnei modern, that they go on a single file line. But then, what's the Pasuk the Mishnah brought? Hayyitzer yachad libam, the Eibishter creates the hearts of everybody together. Hamevin al kol and he understands all their actions. So my karma, what is the Mishnah saying with this Pasuk that it's quoting? What does this Pasuk mean? If you're going to translate this Pasuk to mean, this is what it means. The Eivishter created the entire world. And the Eivishter unifies the hearts of all people to be one and the same. That the hearts of all people is the same. If that would be the Pshat of the Pasuk, but it's not so. We see that it's not so. Everybody in their heart has different feelings and thinks differently. Everybody is different. So how could you say that Ebesha makes everyone the same? So then what does this Pasuk mean? Like Rabbi Yechanan said, The Ebesha that created them sees and looks at all of the hearts of everybody when he judges them together, all as one, even though they're, fa- they're passing through in a single file line separately, but nevertheless, the Ebesha sees all of them together. And so the Mishnah brought this Pasik, so therefore we see that the Mishnah is saying this point. Okay, we move on to the next Mishnah, Zokta Heilige Mishnah, Al Shisha Chadoshi Mashluchim Yaitzin. There are six months that the Bezdin had to send out Shluchim, to notify the people that are in faraway places on what day the Bezdin was Makadish to Chaydish. Was it on the 30th day of the, of the previous month or on the 31st day? What, what became the Aleph of the new month? So they have to send out Shluchim to notify the people in faraway places. What six months? Al Nisan, for the month of Nisan, Mipnea Pesach, so people should know what day Pesach is. Al Av, Mipnea Yatainis, the month of Av for the fast of Tisha B'av. Right, So we're skipping Shvuas. As, uh, as Taisus here says, because Shavuos does not have a particular date on the calendar. Shavuos comes following the Sefer Saimer. So you, once you know when Pesach is, you're going to know when Shavuos is. Al Elul Mipnei Rosh Hashanah. Elul you send out for Rosh Hashanah. Now, of course, Rosh Hashanah is already in the first day of Tishrei, but you can't send out Shluchim for Tishrei. It's on the first day of Tishrei. So you're going to send out at least for Elul, so they should know when Elul was. So when they come to Chav Tes Elul, they should know when Chavtes Elul is to know when Rosh Hashanah is. But the truth is, as Rashi and Taisus both say here, sending out these Shluchim is not going to tell them 100% when Rosh Hashanah is. Because then when you're going to come to the end of Elul, they're not going to know if uh, the first day is going to be on the Lamed of Elul or the first day is going to be on the Lamed Aleph of Elul. So there's a Machlaikis actually here between Rashi and Taisus. Rash, Rashi says that because most years Rosh Hashanah is always on, uh, not always, but most years Rosh Hashanah is on Lamed Elul, so they're going to keep Rosh Hashanah one day on Lamed Elul. Taisvi says, no, they're going to keep Rosh Hashanah Lamed and Lamed Aleph. 
because they're not sure which is the uh, first day of Rosh Hashanah. But at least you send them out so they could know when Elul was, so it makes it clear for them when you get to, to Rosh Hashanah in the beginning of Tishrei. They don't need a month for that. True. So maybe they didn't send them out all the way in the beginning. You have to make sure that the Shluchim arrived in the time for Chavtes Elul. Al Tishrei Mipnei Takanes HaMoyedais. Then they sent them out in Tishrei time for the Moyedais, which is Yom Kippur and Sukkis in the month of Tishrei. Al Kislev Mipnei Chanakeh. Kislev, you have to send out the Shluchim for Hanukkah. Also, towards the end of the month, you have to make sure that they arrive in time for Chofei uh, Kislev. Apparently, this is speaking about very far away places because most places, by the time Chofei Kislev comes around, they know already when the Kislev was, was uh, established. But for far away places, that they're only going to arrive there to Ch- by Chofei Kislev. Val Adar Mifnea Purim, and in the month of Adar to know when Purim is. When the Besamikdash was standing, they sent out Shluchim also for the month of Ir for Pesach Koton. Rashi says Pesach Sheni, to know when the people that have to be in Makar of the carbon on Pesach Sheni, when Pesach Sheni is. Frek, the Gemara. No, they didn't know 100% Rosh Hashanah, right? They knew when Elul was, so they knew. They still had a suffix about Rosh Hashanah. They didn't know 100%. So they had to send out for Yom Kippur and Sukkot again to know exactly when Yom Kippur and Sukkot is. Why don't we send out Shluchim for Tamos and Tevis in order to know when to fast on Shivasa B'Tamos and when to fast on Asara B'Tevis? What is the Pshat on the Pasuk where it says that Koyama Hashem Tzvoi Tzoyim Harevi V'Tzoyim HaChamishi V'Tzoyim HaShvi V'Tzoyim HaSiri Yi L'Beis Yehudu L'Sosan L'Simcha So these are the fasts that there are in these Chadashim. The Gemara is soon going to elaborate more on this Pasik. So it says in this Pasik that it's a Sosan and Simcha. So he taich, what does this mean? Kari Luhu Tzoyim The Pasik refers to these days as fasts. And the Kari Luhu Sosan V'Simcha It also refers to them as times of joy. So what does this mean? When there's a time of peace, which means that uh, this, this Pasuk was said in the, be- in the beginning of the time when the second base of Mikdash was built already. So then when there's a time of peace, when, so then they don't have to fa- fast. Then it's Sosan and Simcha. When it's not a time of peace, after the Chorban base of Mikdash, that's a time that they have to fast. So you see over here that all of these fasts, are written in the Pasuk, that you have to fast on these days. So why don't we send out Shluchim for Asada B'Tevis and for Shavasa B'Tamus? Yeah. Yes, correct. And even then, they were already saying that it's going to be destroyed. They even knew that the B'Samikdash is going to be destroyed. And therefore, in the time of uh, when there's no Shalom, you have to fast. So Rav Papa says, no, the Pshat is different. Om Rav Papa, the way you read this pasuk is as follows: Bizman shalom in a time when there's peace. So then yil l'sasan l'simcha. These days are times of joy and happiness. Yesh gzeiras amalchos. On the other hand, if it's a time of golos, but it's not only a time of golos, but there's a time when there's gzeiras, then tzayim. Then you have to fast. Ein gzeiras amalchos ve'ein shalom. If it's a time where there is no gzeiras, there's no persecution. But it's also not a time of Shalom. It's not a time when you have the base of Mikdash. So then, Ratsu Misanin, Ratsu Ein Misanin. If you want, you have to fast. If you don't want, you don't have to fast. It's not an obligation to fast. It's only a Rishos. So if it's only a Rishos, they don't send out the Shluchim of Bezdin to go and let people know about the timing since it's not an obligation. No, according to what it says here in the Gemara, the fast of Shavasa Batamos and Asada Batavis is not a fast which is an obligation. It's only a Rishos. But nevertheless, the Pail, the Paiskim and the Rishayim already, and the Shulchan Aruch, it's Paskim, that it was accepted as a Chiyuv, and therefore it is a Chiyuv to fast. But in Me'ikir Adin, as it says here in the Gemara, it's totally in the Ratzin, if a person wants to fast or not. Threk to Gemara, so Ihachi, Tishabov Nami. Let's say the same thing about Tishabov. It's also one of the things that is mentioned in the Pasik, which is Saim HaChamishi. So shouldn't that also be dependent on the Ratzin? So why are we sending out Shluchim for Tishabov? The fast of Tishabov is more stringent. Since there was, there was doubled, the Tzadis on that day are doubled, therefore it's a more stringent fast. The first base of Mikdash was destroyed in Tishabov, and the second base of Mikdash, the city Beitar was conquered. There were many Yidin there that were killed. This is the story in the Gemara and Gitten. And also it's the day that the city Yerushalayim was plowed. The, by, uh, who was it? By Nevuzradon? Not Nevuzradon, by uh, Truns, 
a kapan of the, 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 the city of Yerushalayim was plowed, and therefore there were many tzadahs that happened on the same day. Taisus actually points out that even on Shavasa Betamos, there was also more than one thing that happened on that day. There were five things that happened on that day, but nevertheless, because there were Chochbalu Atzadahs and Tishabov regarding the Chorban Beis Mikdosh, which is something that's so, so terrible, that's, that's why it's an uh, obligation, even according to Rav Papa, that says that uh, Rotsu Misanen and Rotsu E Misanen. Now the Gemara goes back to this Pasuk here, to explain more particularly this Pasuk, what are all these fasts? So Tanya we learned in Abrai said, Omer Rab Shimin, Rab Shimin said, Arba Dvarim, Hoya Rab Akiva Doirish. There were four things that Rab Akiva Darshan, Ve'en Ani Doirish Kamaisa, and I do not Darshan the same as him. The Gemara does not bring all four things, it actually points you where it's brought, but here it brings you one Drasha regarding this Pasuk. Tsai Maravi, what is the, four, the, the, the fast, the fourth fast? Zet Tes Petamos. This refers to, to, to the ninth day of Tamos. That's the day that the city was breached, the city of the Shalai. Shanamar, and there was a big hunger in the city, and no one had bread, but Tibaka the city wall was breached. Why is it referred to as the fourth fast? Because Tamos, it's the fourth of the month. That's uh, the first fast that's mentioned in the Pasik. The Mepharshim speak about this Bariches, because it says here, Tes Tamos, and the fast is Shavasa Betamos. In the Yerushalmi, it actually says Shavasa Betamos, and there's uh, some that say that Tes Tamos was when the wall was breached in the time of the first base of Mikdash, and Shavasa Betamos is when it was breached in the second base of Mikdash, and therefore we fast when it was breached in the second base of Mikdash. The Rebbe brings this in in Bariches, in the Chelik Yudches, in the Sichi, in the Ha'aris, and there the Rebbe says that, from, the Rebbe brings it from Bepharshim, the Marsha and others, that really Tes Betamos here is the same day as Shavas Betamos. But they had it off. They, they, it's written in the Pasuk, but it really means Shavas Betamos because the difference between the Shnas Achamo and the Shnas Halavana, they were counting it with the uh, Shnas Achamo. So therefore they had it off. But really with the Shnas Halavana, with the lunar calendar, it, it was Shavas Betamos even in the first place on Mikdash. Okay, there's a, the, the Magen Avram actually in Shulchan Aruch brings that there are those that fast also test Tammuz. A Baal Nefesh should fast and test Tammuz. But the Rebbe says that uh, according to this Marsha, there's no reason to fast and test Tammuz because the Emes is, even in the first place of Mikdash, the wall was breached, Shavasa Betamuz. So that's the first thing mentioned in the Pasuk. Then, Tzayma Chamishi, Zet Tishabav. This refers to Tishabav, Shabbat Nisar Beis Alekeinu, when the Beis Mikdash was burnt. Amai Karile Chamishi, why is it refers to as Chamishi? Chamishi L'Chadoshim. It's the fifth of the month. Tzay Mashvi Zagimul Betishrei. Tzay Mashvi refers to the third day in Tishrei. Shabbat Nera Gedal Yibn Achikam. Gedal Yibn Achikam, the leader of Klal Yisrael after the Chorban that still was leading the Yidin that were in Eretz Yisrael. And then after he was killed, all the Yidin got, uh, that there, was, that there was nothing left afterwards to the whole Yishuv of the Yidin in Eretz Yisrael. Umi Hargai Yishma Ben Asanya Hargai. Yishma Ben Asanya killed him. Lametcha, and this teaches you, Sheshkula misasan shal tzadikim kisreifas beisa lekeinu, that when a tzadik passes away, it's, it's equivalent to the Beis HaMikdash being destroyed, and therefore it's also a day of a fast. Why is it referred to as Shvi? Shvi l'chadoshim. It's the seventh of the month, the third day of Tishrei, the seventh month. Then the Pasuk says, Tzoyim siri the, the, the fast of the tenth. The tenth, what is the tenth? Zah siri betevis, refers to the tenth day of Tevis. Shaboy somach melech babal al Yerushalayim. That's when melech babal placed the siege on Yerushalayim. Shanema v'yidva Hashem elai b'shana atshiyis b'chaydesh ha'asiri. In the ninth year, in the tenth month, b'asal ha'chaydesh, in the tenth of the month. Leimoy ben adam kosav l'cha es shem hayoyim es etzam hayoyim azeh somach melech babal al Yerushalayim. This is the day when melech babal placed the siege on the city of Yerushalayim. I might cut it Asiri. Why is it called the tenth? Asiri lechadosh, because te- Tevis is the tenth of the months. Okay, so this is the order in the Psukim. So now the question is, The last that's mentioned in the Pasik when he placed the siege, that was the beginning of the Chorban. So that happened earlier. That should have been written earlier in the Pasik. So why is it written as the last thing in the Pasik? The answer is, That's because according to Rabbi Kiva, the Pasuk is writing them not in the order of events of how it happened, but in the order of the months of the year. Then Rabbi Shimon says, but I, I don't dash in this like Rabbi Shimon. I do say that the order of the Psukim is not only in the order of the months, but also in the order of the events. 
Tzoyimah refers to something else, not to Asada B'Tevis, but the fifth day of Tevis. What happened then? Shaboy Ba'as Shmua L'Gayla. That's when the rumor about what happened in the Chorban the Beis came down to the people that were in Golos. Shahuk saw here that the, that the city was, was, uh, was destroyed. Right? Well, as Rashi brings over here, there were people that went into Golos earlier on. They went into Golos even when the first Beis HaMikdash was standing and they went down into Golos and they got the report of the Beis HaMikdash that was destroyed. When did they get the report? Only a few years after the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. And they got the report on, on the fifth day of, of Tevis. And because they got the report on that day, they fasted. Shanamat says in the Pasik, by Yibishtei Esrei Shana, the twelfth year, before we were talking about the ninth year. This is the twelfth year, Ba'asiri Ba'chamisha L'Chaydish, in the tenth month, in the fifth day of the month, L'Galuseinu, Bo Elaya Polit M'Yerushalayim, a refugee from Yerushalayim came, Lamer, and he told them, Hoksa Ha'ir, the city was destroyed. And Ba'asu Yem Shmua Ki Sreifa. The day that they got this report, they considered it like the day that the Bishop Miklish was, was burnt. So according to the Rab Shimon, when it talks about, yeah. So according to Rab Shimon, when the pasuk talks about Saima city, it's not talking about the beginning of the Chorban. When they placed the siege on the city, it's talking about a few years later, when they got the report. So the psukim are written in order. The fasts that are written in the psukim are also in the order of the way it happened. And he says, "V'nirin dvara midvarav." So Rab Shimon says, "What I say makes more sense than what Rabbi Kiva says." Shani oimei arishon rishon v'alachin achin. According to my pshat, it goes in the order. What's first is first, and what's last is last. V'hu oimei, but he says, "Arishon achin v'alachin rishon." What's mentioned first in the pasuk, which is the shivasa betamos, that's that's a later event. That's when the wall was actually breached. And what's mentioned later in the pasuk, they placed the siege on the city. That actually happened first. Ela, but shuhu mine will say the chadashim. Rabbi Kiva is, is interpreting the passing in the order of the months that it happened. And I'm counting it also, not only in the order of the months, but also in the order of how it actually happened. Itmer, we learned the Machlaikis, Rav and Rabchanina. Rav and Rabchanina argued as follows. Omri, they both, so Rav and Rabchanina, actually they, they are, their opinion goes together. So Rav and Rabchanina both said, Batla Megillas Tainus. The Megillas Tainus is Batla. So Megillas Tainus is a Megillah that has a bunch of dates of miracles and good things that happened to Yidin. And in that Megillah it says that on those days you're not allowed to fast, you're not allowed to make a eulogy and so on. So this Megillah's Tainus, all those dates are bottle. We don't keep them anymore. Rabbi Yechen and Rabbi Shua ben Levi Yomri, loy bottle Megillah's Tainus. No, those dates in Megillah's Tainus are not bottle, we still keep them. Rav Rab Chanin Amri Batla Megillas Tainus. Why did Rav Rab Chanin say that it's Batla Hachi Ka'amar? This is what it says. This man sheyesh shalom. So just like we said before, Rabbi, right, we brought before the pasuk regarding the fasts that when there's a time of peace, then Yilas Asan Alisimcha. Then there are days of joy, and therefore you don't fast. Ain shalom when there's no peace, then tsaim. Then it's a time that you have to fast. So the same thing over here. Vahanach nami kihani. Over here also, these dates of uh, Megillah's Tainus are similar to what it says regarding the fast. Just like when it, when it, when it is why those fasts, that, that is when there's a time of joy, they're bottle. So over here as well, when it comes to all of these dates re- that are written in Megillah's Tainus, they're also bottle. Right? So the Mepharshim explain these dates of miracles that are written in Megillah's Tainus. So in the time of the Beis HaMikdash, all these great miracles that Yidin had Saris and they were saved, they counted them as something special, and they were, they, they, that's why it's mentioned in Megillus Tainus. But after the Chorban, there were so many different Tzadahs that Yidin had constantly, and they were saved from this and from that. So there, there was too many dates. These, these things were constantly happening to Klal Yisrael. So therefore, this whole thing of Megillus Tainus was bottle. The Megillus Tainus is not bottle. Those fasts that are mentioned in the Pasik, there the Pasik is clearly saying that it depends if the Besamikdash is standing or not. When it's standing, there's no fasts. When, it's, when there's a Chorban, there is a fast. All of these dates that are mentioned in Megillus Tainus that are not specifically connected to the Besamikdash, so those dates remain even after the Chorban Besamikdash. Most of Rav Kahana, Rav Kahana asks, so one of the dates that I mentioned in Megillus Tainus, a day that you're not dates that you're not allowed to fast, is Hanukkah. So the question is, my said there was an incident with Gazru Tainus for Hanukkah, and they decreed that you should fast on Hanukkah Belud in the city of Lud for some kind of a tzara that there was. And the Yarad Rabbi Loza, the Rochatz Rabbi Loza, Rabbi Yeza went down and he bathed himself in the Rabbi Shua and Rabbi Shua as well. The Sipir, and he said the Omru Lehem. 
And he said to all the people, Tzu v'isanu al ma she'esanisem. Go and fast as an atonement for the fact that you fast on, on, on Hanukkah. In other words, you're not allowed to fast on Hanukkah. So where is the source that you're not allowed to fast on Hanukkah? In Megillus Tainus. So we see that those dates that are written in Megillus Tainus are not, we still keep them. Um, Rav Yasef, Rav Yasef says, Shani Hanukkah deke mitzvah. Hanukkah is different because Hanukkah, there's the mitzvah. It's not, it's not just the day that you don't fast. There's the mitzvah of lighting the Hanukkah menorah and so on. So Hanukkah is different. Um, Amalei Abayah, so Abayah says, V'tibotl ihi, v'tibotl mitzvasa. The whole mitzvah that there is in Hanukkah is because we're celebrating it. If you don't celebrate Hanukkah anymore and the date is bottled, so you don't do the mitzvah either. So let, if the whole thing is bottled, so then you shouldn't have any mitzvah b'chalal either. So why is Hanukkah different? Elamar of Yosef, he says, said differently, Shani Hanukkah to Mefar Nisa. Hanukkah is different, that it's something that is publicized, the miracle that happened at that time. So Rashi explains that this is something that all the Yidin already accepted upon themselves and they all fulfill it. And therefore Rashi says it's mamish like something kishal teireh. It's like something that's, that, that they do, like the, like the teireh, and therefore you can't be mevatel this. Maisev Rav Achabar Hone, Rav Achabar Hone asked, so here he's quoting you from what it says in the Megillus Tainus. Betlase betishrei, on the third day of Tishrei, betelas at karta min shtaraya. The mentioning of the Eibishter's name in shtarais was annulled. And it explains what happened. Shegazra malchus yavon gzeira. The malchus yavon made a decree, shulelahaske shem shemayim al piyem. That they should not mention the Eibishter's name. And then what happened? When Malchus Beis Chashminoi was victorious and then they've defeated them, so they instituted that you should mention the Abish's name and Valfilla Bishtaris. That in every star, every document, they wrote the Abish's name. And the this is how they would write, Bishnas, Kach, Vakach, in this and this year, Liyechen in Koyen Gadol, Lekeil Elyon, for the Abishta. Now, this was actually a very bad thing, because when the Chachamim heard about this, Omru, they said, tomorrow A person pays his loan, and the Nimtza, Shtar Mutl Ba'ashpa. So you have a bunch of these documents that have the Abish's name written on it, and it's in the garbage. Ubitlum, and they annulled this minig of writing the Abish's name in the Shtaris. And Rashi explains the fact that they succeeded in annulling this minig was, was a very, was a, like almost like a ness because the fact that everybody had this minig, it's very hard to, to break such a minig. But they were successful in breaking this minig. And the Oisei Yom Asu Yomtev. And they made on that day that it should be considered to be a Yomtev. So what do we see? This is at a later time period. The Gemara right now is assuming that this actually happened after the time of the Chorban, when this was a Gzeda of the Romans. So this was at a later time period, and they added this date as a time as a yontif. This is considered, they considered this to be a yontif, that they were able to bring the cover to the Abish's name. If you're going to say that all the dates of Megillus Tainus are annulled, Kamaisa bottle, so the previous dates that are written in Megillus Tainus of earlier time periods, they are all annulled. Here it's telling us that they added new dates of things that happened. How could they add new things if you're telling me that all the dates are bottled? And for the Gemara, This new date that was added here was still all in the time of the Besam Mikdash. But then, after the Chorban Besam Mikdash, it was all bottled and they didn't add anything new, like, uh, like what Rav and Rabchanine said before.